Waverly Hill Sanatorium was built in 1926 with the intentions of housing up to 400 tuberculosis patients. At an incredible 180,000 square feet, Waverly remains one of the largest facilities of its kind. As tuberculosis ran rampant through Jefferson County, Waverly Hills was considered the leader in care and respite for those suffering with the disease. Doctors with the best intentions performed painful surgeries, tests, and experiments in a desperate ploy to save lives. Unfortunately, there was nothing that could stop the nearly 63,000 lives claimed by tuberculosis within the walls of Waverly Hills Sanatorium. With this alarming rate of death, bodies were carried out through the death tunnel with the use of a body chute. They were removed in a way to avoid other patients seeing the amount of death they were surrounded by. This was to prevent patients from losing hope. In 1943, the antibiotic streptomycin was discovered and was inevitably realized as a cure for tuberculosis. After this discovery, the need for such facilities started to dwindle and Waverly was able to close its doors to tuberculosis patients in 1961. It is said that the scent of death still haunts this hospital. As you walk through these halls, you can still feel the sadness and the pain felt by so many. At times, you can still hear the voices calling out for help and sometimes just asking to go home. Buried Alive is here to attempt to make contact with those who still remain, to help them tell their stories. paranormals here. I need no convincing. My beliefs on paranormal is that it completely exists. Paranormal totally exists. I'm not sure the extent to which it exists. I, I, I just don't believe until I see it. There are spirits, people who so long coexisting within our universe. As we begin our investigation, we start at room 502. This is said to be a hot spot of activity. A nurse, pregnant out of wedlock, was found hanging in this very hallway. It was later discovered that the nurse had also contracted tuberculosis. Could this SLS evidence we captured still be the nurse hanging from the ceiling? We also capture this EVP of a woman who seems to say, keep the baby. As Brian spends some time alone in the cafeteria, he captures a strange anomaly. Feel bad for how a lot of the patients here were treated. It's unfortunate that our medicine at the time wasn't as advanced as what it is now. We could have saved a lot of you. As all of us couldn't agree on what exactly this anomaly is, we are leaving that up to you. What do you think this light could be? Brian also captures this EVP. We were unable to make out what it is trying to say. <laughs> I 
went downstairs to the morgue to spend some time alone. I also wanted to do a live feed. I set up our new device, who we've named Waverly. She is just a prototype and built for us by inventor Rick Gray. She is able to detect motion, temperature change, and can even record EVPs. She certainly proved her worth during this session. Do you want to tell me something? Oh, we got two. Yeah, some of this hardcore mess up with that dog. Wow, look at that. Now it'll only show me two at a Hi, time. So. I'm Teddy. Can you change the color of my necklace? As I am doing a live feed on my phone, I hear what sounds like keys and footsteps out in the hallway. Waverly responds to it as well. It's getting colder. She's trying to turn her head again. I radio to see if anyone has come downstairs. Are you a boy? Has anybody come downstairs? Hi, I'm Ted. Can anybody Can hear you me? Can change the color of my necklace? There was definitely just somebody walking around down here. It is getting warmer. There is definitely some serious activity going on right here in this hallway. It's nice to meet you. I'm still in the morgue. Okay, I'm still in the morgue. You just passed me. Did you see anything? I know you guys were watching the thing. It straight out sounded like someone walking through here with keys, and I thought it was something else, but... What? Oh, there you go. Was it Jamie? Who? Shut, shut the doll on for a minute. What is playing back? Oh, is that me live? Hey, shut me off live. Whoever's watching me live, cut it off. Yeah. I don't know if any of you heard that, but it literally sounded like somebody walking down here with keys. Heavy footsteps, literally jingling right here, right outside the doorway. She's trying to turn her head again. She's trying to turn her head again. I also capture these EVPs. Let's walk down there. Let's go. Pat and I headed out of the morgue and down the hallway to try and further investigate. Oh yeah. Hey, hey, hey. It's right on the... Right on the pillow, right in front of us. Yeah, there's, I hear Jeremy talking. Uh, that's a big dude. Look. Yeah. There he is. That's a big dude. Can you reach out and touch me? Can you reach out and touch me? 
You want to touch me? Come on. Come on. Oh, look at it. It's like reacting to your fingers. Yeah. Weird. Hi. Hi. Oh, my God. Look at Do you guys see this? Holy crap. That's cool. How are you doing? My name's Pat. Can you tell us your name? Are you in the lobby? Yes. Can you tell us your name? Hi. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm just trying to shake your hand. I think he's pushing you away. You should back off. Hi. I don't think he's... Do you want me to go away? We're not here to hurt you. Look, he's reaching now. Yes. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'll let you come to me. I'll let you come to me. If you want to go home, you can go home. It's okay. You don't have to stay here anymore. You're free to go. Is there anybody else in here with you? Is there anybody else in here with you? Oh, careful. Don't get too close. He is literally okay with me now. Look. Yeah. I move down, he moves his arm down. I'm not going to hurt you. Are you guarding something down here? We back up, can we see him better? Maybe. It's like hanging on the wall. It's actually really kind of heartbreaking. It is. Here, here. Oh, now he's gone. Oh. Where'd he go? See if he went to the right. Let's head back to base. During our time in the lobby, Pat and I capture an EVP of a woman saying, Can you hear me? As our guest Brian is downstairs investigating with Jeremy, Pat, and Chance, they decide to go into the room that was originally a vault. Our tour guide did not tell us what happened in this room, but rather decided to leave it to us to figure it out through our investigations. However, we will let Brian tell his story, as something happened to him in this room that he will not soon forget. It's a little hard to explain. I can't tell you whether it was evil or whether it was something good, just that somebody in that room was affecting me. All right, so this is the vault. Something horrible happened here, our tour guide said. She wouldn't tell us the details. She left it up to us, an investigation, to figure it out for ourselves. When we first walk into the safe, Pat notices the stick figure on the wall with the SLS camera. Pat, will you, uh, will you get the chairs for me? You got some on the wall? Yep, on the wall. Can you walk over to the chair for me? The single chair? Can you reach out for us? Oh yeah, your hand's right by it. He's not on the wall. He's not. He's like he's, in, he's like in between us and the wall. I turn my camera towards the wall, hoping to catch any movement. That's my hand. My battery is drained. Not only did Jeremy's battery drain, but the SLS also malfunctioned. This is the only footage it recorded. Jeremy asked whatever it is in the room with us to sit on the couch. Can you go to this chair right here? 
All right, please have a seat. If you'd be so kind, we just have some questions for you. When he does this, we get a strange EVP. Please sit down. Okay, I don't know. Maybe Brian's possessed right now. They mentioned that something was sitting on my lap. Is it sitting next to Brian? No, it's standing. It's standing, it's crouching almost in Brian's face. Listen, nobody is going to tell your story. The only person I can tell your story is you, so you got to answer our questions. And I slowly started to feel numb over my entire body. If you were abused in this room in any way, I want you to touch Brian's right hand. Pat, Jeremy, and Chance were explaining to me what was happening on the SLS screen. Touch Brian's right hand. I couldn't feel anything at the time. Jeremy decides to try and get a response using the 2K meter. Do you have your, your meter on you? Can I see it real fast? I forgot you even had this. Okay, here we, here's what we're going to do. New game. We're going to put this meter in the chair. That meter will pick up your energy. You may be still alive, so forgive us that we can't see you. But if you're in this room with us right now and you are listening, I want you to go near that meter and make that green light flash orange. It's not worth bothering you if you don't want to communicate. There are plenty of people in here. All right, well. After getting no further response, we decided to leave the room. I appreciate your time anyway. I felt a little off, kind of odd, and noticed that I had a huge bruise on the inside of my thigh and showed Jeremy what had occurred to me. He responded with a, wow, how did that happen? And I said, I think it happened in the safe room. Did they lock you in this vault? We decided to take Brian back into the vault. Do you have a hard time understanding other people? We have a shadow of a brother. Is there a group forming outside of here? We asked some questions and seemed to get some EMF responses. Whatever is in here tries to get all the cameras removed from the room, and it succeeds. Hey, should we turn the camera to the space and water right now? How far should Chance go out? Should you go by the front door? Should you get it just right outside the bowl so that you face the whole lobby? After sitting in there for a while, Jeremy and I notice that Brian begins to act strange like he had earlier that night. So we decide it is best for everyone if we take Brian and leave.
We all end up on the fifth floor in the children's ward. I see what appears to be a child in the floor camera. It is this incident that sets off a chain reaction and provides evidence in a way we have never seen before. Jeremy will explain this for you. Jamie and Chrissy, I remember, had the thermal camera speaking out about an entity that they were capturing on a thermal camera. So it's got to adjust. That's probably one of the weirdest sensations I've ever felt. Back up all the way, Jamie. Let's see if it'll go back to the color. Yep. It did, but... In the footage, you can see what looks like the entity actually reaches out and touches my hand. And so that's what you see me come around and do, and that's my arm reaching out. Did, look, look, it's, it was just reaching for you. It was after this incident that I had so much aggression built up inside me and there was no reason for it. Look how freaking dark it got. I was watching Jamie and Christy still walk around the thermal and for some reason I just, I just resented them. I, I couldn't stand what they were doing. Everything that, everything that they had been doing, it just, it just pissed me off. It was Elizabeth uh, was fighting her inner demons as well. I remember being angry. And from that point on, I just got angrier and angrier. Uh, my brother would try to talk to me, and I didn't want to talk to him. I kept having to go out on the balcony and come back in trying to calm down. I was still really ticked off. Uh, my brother came to stand next to me, and I physically removed myself from him. I didn't want to be around anyone. I didn't want to talk to anybody. The person from the other team came to sit next to me on the bench, and that made me angry. It's like, why is this person sitting next to me? I don't want to be near anybody right now. And that feeling did not leave until we left the grounds. I can just look at Alicia and know that something's not right with her. And I remember Alicia telling me that she just wanted to, she just wanted to beat the hell out of Christy for no reason. It's not me. I wanted to slice her throat. I wanted to hurt her. I wanted to hurt a lot of people. That's not normal. It is. I don't know if you've experienced this from anybody else near me. Like people just like get fucking mad and they get hateful and evil and just out of nowhere. There comes a point where things get too tense and out of control, out of your hands, and when you become, when you're not in control of the situation anymore, that's when you, you need to learn to back away or look at your teammate that's going through this and say, hey, enough, it's time to, it's time to leave. And that's kind of what I did. I, I wandered Waverly by myself. Did we just back you in a corner? Wow. That's that's Jamie moving okay. on that okay. window. I was going to say, holy crap. That's neat. But look at, like, it looks like it keeps trying to form. Look at it. It's like yeah. forming. What's your name? As I kept seeing what appeared to be a face, I took a screenshot of the floor camera and removed the color. What I saw was astonishing. It appears to be the face and body of a young child. I cannot say if this was the entity that affected so many of us at Waverly Hills that night. I can say that it seemed to be linked to at least Jeremy's anger and Jeremy's experience. What a question this has raised for all of us. This experience truly left us all wanting more answers about the paranormal and life after death.
Investigating at Waverly Hill Sanitarium is not for the faint of heart. All of us experience things we may never be able to explain. One thing is certain, residents continue to remain here even in death. Although buried alive physically walked away, a piece of our souls will always belong to Waverly Hills and those who continue to dwell within. Bat. Huh? Bat. <laughs> uh, put your light at the ground. Put your light at the ground. And then shut it off. Yep. There he goes. Is he out? Yep. Nope. Oh, sure. Hold on. Bat patrol. the camera that you're actually laying inside there? Well then I'll turn it around for you. Because I'm not all the way in because it's hard. Oh my god. So you're so what is that right there? You're actually in what are they doing that thing? What is that? Again, one more time. Well this is where they put dead bodies. Wow you don't get you don't yeah. feel oh that's some crazy yeah. stuff man. I'm wow. Like 